neighbor narc tien watering actinook mak peri and watering bagaruk manameth mir bea nilinga watering bake cutting garapo bunjo the ego wa the crow kimbani ba dian gilson welcome to watering country Live from Wadarung Country, welcome to Lance TV. Coming to you from the palatial new Camp Street Studios in Ballarat, get ready to laugh, think, love and sparkle. And now, it's time to turn that camp dial all the way up to fabulous. Here's your host, the multi-award winning Lance-tastic, Lance DePoyle. who have been with us for the last four days. Here at Lands TV, Dr Soph has been working quite steadily with them. That's right, we have two, count them, one, two, work experience people with us in the studio this evening. Nate is currently driving, so all the uh, vision switching um, will, might, could be exciting, could be wonderful, could be both. And we currently have Jude out here on the, on the floor as a floor, floor manager, letting us know what's going on, when and where and how. And of course, we've got some very proud parents in the studio audience as well. But that's another story. Um, but it's been honestly a wonderful journey with them. And they will be on a little bit later in the show to tell us about how horrible it's been at Lance TV. Um, other news for us. We recently have uh, received two grants, one from the Community Broadcasting Foundation. Uh, we have been funded for another 12 months into 24-25 um, to do another year's worth of Lance TV. Uh, there has been some money earmarked to pay one of our people, like EG, Dr Sophie, um, to be part of the Lands TV family. So from us to the CBF or Community Broadcasting Foundation, thank you both, uh, thank you both. Thank you so much for, for the funding. We really appreciate your support for our, our little project here in Ballarat. The other funding that we have been fortunate to receive uh, is to do with the Queer Festival of Australian Theatre. Our thanks goes out to Regional Arts Victoria uh, through Creative Victoria. Uh, they have uh, bestowed upon us some wonderful funding so we can pay for an artistic director and some production crew to uh, undertake our first or our inaugural festival here in Ballarat. So tickets will be on sale very soon. Uh, uh, I think not this weekend, but next weekend tickets will be on sale and um, we're very excited to be behind this, this wonderful initiative that is the Festival of Australian Queer Theatre. Talking about all things festival, we have a wonderful guest on the show tonight who actually has nothing to do with festivals, but I wanted to make myself a tangent to make them laugh before they came out. Please put your hands together for the very wonderful Jack Curry. There we go. Oh, darling, look at you. How are you? Mwah, mwah. You're looking impeccable. Who are you wearing? Oh, well, I had to wear a button-up shirt because I didn't want to be outdone, but I didn't know we were going waist care. Oh, look Showing out. me up. Please take a seat. <coughs> oh, Jack, it's so nice to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being had. <laughs> um, you are the, the manager of... Q Hub? Correct. Is yes. that right? Can yeah. you want to tell us a little bit about Q Hub? Yeah, so Q Hub is um, primarily we're a, a mental health, wellbeing, and social support service for LGBTIQA plus young people and their special people, so families, friends. Amazing. Yeah. You are amazing. We're going to learn more about you as the show goes on, but you, you're not actually a Ballarat person either. You're from down Geelong way? Um, yeah, I live just outside of Geelong in a little um, property 
where I've got um, some uh, horses and some chickens and some dogs and some children and where a big um, big bowl of chaos. Fantastic. Would you have it any other way? No, absolutely no. not. Love no. it. <laughs> I've seen photos and I'd always wonder, like, do you keep horses? No. And then there you are, Cowboy Jack. Yeah, that's that's me, just trying to wrangle the pony mainly. Oh. That's a cheeky one. Oh, it is. <laughs> um, are you off-grid or you've just got a bit of land? Um, no, mostly off-grid, yeah. So we've got um, electricity, we've got no, no mains water, no gas, nothing like that. So, yeah, it's pretty cool and a little slice of land there. That's amazing. Do you have a food forest? Um, <laughs> I'm building one. So I've put in a whole <laughs> bunch of fruit trees and sort of building up veggie patches and stuff like that. And yeah. will you build an, um, an earth ship? Um, well, actually, in the town that I live, there is a property that has this old dilapidated ship in the front yard. It is very, very odd. So um, I don't know if I can get um, my partner over the line for an earth ship, but um, yeah, I think we'll get some good fruit trees. Fantastic. <laughs> Amazing. Jack, thanks for being our guest tonight. We have a few pre-records that we do on the show. Yep. Uh, the first one that we're going to do now, which is Lance TV's uh, Artist Corner. On the segment tonight, Dr Sophie has found us one of the most wonderful people in Ballarat who make art, and their name is Peter Sparkman. We hope you enjoy this segment, and we'll see you right after this. Oh, who am I? I've lost words. Hang on a second. <laughs> well, I first sort of discovered that I could really draw when I was in grade six. We went to Sovereign Hill and it only just opened and there wasn't anything there except a slab hut next to the lagoon. So we had to draw that and I drew it in three dimensional perspective. And the teacher went, oh my God. Well, I majored in drawing and sculpture when I was out at uni because we could do double majors at the time uh, with an elective in printmaking. So it was like 2D through to 3D. It's always handy to know how to make anything though. So I sort of went more down the drawing line of things. A very long time ago, I got bashed by three guys in Vic Park. I tried to remember as hard as I could what they looked like, but I was so angry, it just came out as three raging bogan demons in the darkness sort of thing. Um, I was so furious at them. I was just minding my own business, doing nothing. I've always taken photos as well, so photography is a large part of my art practice. When I got stuck in Darwin for 13 years, you can't just... The place isn't really conducive to the longevity of anything on any kind of paper or anything like that. So I started learning Photoshop and stuff like that and I moved into a more digital format. Uh, this is one I made recently. It's called Why Are All The Good Ones Gay? Because I really like the whole pop art thing and, and uh, Roy Lichtenstein that used to do all the pop art. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Doctor Who, so it's always been part of my life. And um, when I noticed that Meta AI had been attached to Facebook, I thought, oh, I'll try. I tried Mid Journey, but you got to pay for it and couldn't afford it. Um, so I tried Meta AI, and it seems like one of the more infantile image generation programs because it has no idea about anything in Australia. Trying to get the TARDIS to materialise in the Eureka Stockade during the rebellion and it just ended up producing this whole slab of like absolute slaughter. Everything was being slaughtered, you know, it wouldn't do, it wouldn't make Peter Lawler it wouldn't cut his arm off or anything like that. So I got, because the TARDIS was in the pictures, I got all these different versions of what could be the Doctor, like standing there looking at the devastation. Hang on, this is fun. I'll start, I'll see if I can 
do a couple of stories I know from Ballarat's past and everything, and they got so bizarre, I just sort of thought, not everyone's talking about AI at the moment, uh, like in, in the arts field, and um, everyone's really worried about what will happen, and I thought, well, you know, even the, even the larger search engines that have got a massive data set um, to access still get things wrong. Trying to get it to do the different scenes from a story and then they're all failed and wrong and twisted and warped and like horror and all that and everything. I thought, I'll oh, put all them up, everyone can just watch them. And but the thing is, as an artist, I started making all the failed images work. Like, if you just rearrange them in a certain order, you could tell a story. When I made them into stories, there were way too many. You know, there's 24 frames per second in a film or whatever. Um, on, when you just play them through on the telly from a USB stick, they're too slow and it takes forever. So I thought, I'll just start making them into videos in Premiere Pro. Uh, and it was reducing the, long, the length of the time to watch them by two thirds, which was great because I hate it when people get bored watching something and then you go, no, no, you've got to wait because there's these ones coming up that are really good and I don't want you to miss them. I think whether people like it or not uh, means a lot to everybody because they wouldn't be wearing this or living in that or like looking at that. It is a part of their lives whether they go to galleries or anything like that or not, you know. It's everywhere, you should appreciate it, just like sport. And welcome back. Everybody's on Facebook and I'm going to see who's in the thread. Are you excited? Couldn't be more excited. Oh, look at you, I can see it in your face. Uh, Harper Francis, Finitash Timmons, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Good to see you in the thread, darling. Yay! Uh, Wombat and Goose presents Out of the Can. Hey, folks. Hello, Wombat and Goose, Out of the, out of the Can. If you are looking for um, a television show that presents short Australian films, you might want to tune in to that show on Channel 31. You can also see it on CTV+. And I don't know if... Do you, guys, do you actually put stuff on Facey as well, or will that be a... A copyright strike, maybe a copyright strike. Uh, let us know your times and dates. Um, and I don't know if it's Goose or Wombat or whether you're both watching. Um, so there you go. Hey, what did you think of Sparky? I thought it was really good. What yeah. did you think, the art? Yeah, I lo like so diverse. You know, that's what I really like about it. Uh, the thing with Sparky, all mm. of that AI stuff that, that he was doing, yeah. I've known Sparky 40 years and He's, he was already painting things like that when he was like in his 20s. It's like, yeah, all right. Um, and that's, that's who he is. And, and AI, he's taken to it like a duck to hot water. Yeah, that AI stuff's pretty, pretty intense in the art world. You know, they, um, I was reading recently, someone got an Andy Warhol and they copied it on AI and did so many copies and then they sold them all for however many dollars. And so if somebody's got the actual Warhol, but you don't know which one because it's so accurate through the AI. Wow. Mm. Have you played with AI? Um, oh, a little bit, not too much. Actually, Alex, our um, youth and family prac in Ballarat, um, his um, room that he works out of, his counselling room, he's made pictures based on what young people have asked for out of AI and he's got them up on the wall. It's really cool. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, very, very cool. nice. That's a really great way to sort of um, work with young people too. Like, give me a suggestion, I'll make it and I'll be here next time you come in. Yeah, some of them are weird, like a hamburger chasing you down the street and mm. things like that. So, yeah. I just had that dream last night. <laughs> <laughs> Not a kebab? No, wow. Actually, we should catch up for lunch again soon too. Mm, we do like a kebab. We do like a good country kebab. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching TV. This is Jack and I'm Lance. I just suddenly realised the camera was on you. Yay! Um, yeah, so you're watching us. Hooray. That's all I've got to say. Jack, we are at the first part of the interview. Are mm. you ready? Ready as I'm going to be, I think. It sounds like consent to me. Let's <laughs> go. Is. Jack, we've been doing this show seven years. Um, four of those on Channel 31. Yep. 
We have always asked this question as our first question because I'm a curious child. <laughs> Where were you born? I'll give a shout out to Hornsby in Sydney. <laughs> Hornsby, is that where they make the train, little model trains? I no. <laughs> no, I'm not sure, but which way's Hornsby? Is that west, east? Hornsby, it's kind of northish. Yeah, before you sort of start getting onto the central coast. All right, so it's kind of like the end of a line, train line, before you move into the never never. That's right. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what sort of like what sort of place is Horn? What sort of place was Hornsby like to grow up in? Well, for me, so we actually grew up in Thornley and Thornley has a really big Lebanese population and my dad's Lebanese, I grew up with my dad. And, um, you know, it was pretty cool because we had lots of sort of family and cousins and stuff nearby. And also like the house I grew up in was built in the 1800s. And I love that kind of old architecture, architecture and a lot of the houses were similar. So yeah, it was, you know, quite a nice sort of community vibe, I guess. So yeah, I liked it. And also um, our house backed onto a national park. So we had bushland. So me and my brothers were just always in the bush. Um, yeah. Amazing. And you are the eldest of four boys? Correct. Yeah? Yes. Um, so is that kind of a, because we best know you, I mean, we introduced you as manager to QHub, but we best know, know you as somebody who is of service to their community. Is that kind of where your, your idea of being of service to somebody came from? Yeah, I'd definitely say so, like being the eldest. So I, like when I was younger, I really um, just grew up with my dad and my brothers and my dad would be at work a lot. And so I'd be as the eldest, that sort of responsibility was on me to sort of look after my brothers in a way. and. Um, you know, make sure everybody was, you know, organised and had their needs met. So, yeah, I, I reckon that would probably be where it sort of started for little baby Jack. Yeah, right. And, and is there kind of the, the age group between you all? Is it kind of relatively close or are they big? Yeah, so um, me, Andrew and Matt are all sort of 18 months apart. And then from me to my youngest brother, Trey, there's a 10-year gap because that was from... Um, yeah, like my mother's second marriage. Oh, wow, okay. Yep, but we all, um, uh, we laugh now because we're, um, Andrew's basically the token cis head of the family, because all my mother. <laughs> There's other... one in every family. <laughs> I know. <I've> <laughs> so, yeah, like me, Matt and um, Trey all hold queer identities. So, yeah, it's pretty funny. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, before the show, we were kind of talking about what we would be talking about in the interview. Yeah. You spoke to me about an organisation in Hornsby called Galar, like, <laughs> <laughs> yep. like Galar. What, what or who or when is a Galar? Is a Galar? Um, well, first of all, that was a fantastic impression. So well Thank done. Um, I do try. It really took me back. Um, no, no Galars were harmed in the creation Making of Galar. Me this interview. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. well, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I was like really fortunate actually. So, you know, I came out quite young and when I was 16, um, you know, I didn't really know any other queer people actually um, in my area and I stumbled across this group that had just started um, called Galar, which was Gay and Lesbians at Hornsby. Nice. Um, even though in the advertising it was like, and bi and trans and, you know, it was, but anyway. So Galar, it was run by this amazing person, Amanda, who I now um, have as a really good friend of mine. And, um, and, and David, as, uh, David Moriarty as well. And um, yeah, it was similar to QHub actually. And, and it, it was really like fundamental for me in understanding myself. And Amanda really took her time to get to know us all and really helped us. You know, a lot of us, myself included, were quite sort of on the wrong track at that time. She spent a lot of time getting us to like lean back into our futures and to have this idea of future helped us to get back into school and develop plans for how we're going to create these lives for ourselves. And, you know, the other cool thing that came out of it was the connection with other queer kids. <coughs> I'm sorry, Jack. That's all right. <coughs> I know it's exciting. It just take your breath away. I said I would cough over <laughs> you at some point. You did. 
I'm it's so because sorry. I told you that you could. But anyway, back to you. It's all about Jax. <laughs> no, you're passing it on. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so, um, yeah, and, and that connection with peers and getting to know other queer kids and, and you know, now at 40, and I, I joined that group at 16, and quite a lot of my friends, I'd say probably half of my friends, are friends that I made at Galar, um, you know, in Hornsby. So, yeah, it was really pivotal for me you know, really changed that trajectory of my life into, you know, that feeling of connectedness and that feeling of okayness in, in myself and that I could actually strive for a, you know, a good future for myself and, yeah. So you kind of went from isolation to a real sense of belonging and connection? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it definitely also helped that um, Amanda brought in her pug. So you can't go. I went for the pub. Pub, If there is a pub on board, the life is good. Yeah, correct, correct. Amazing. And what sort of things happened at Galar? Yeah, so you know, um, sort of similar to Q Hub in a way, but it was. You quite... stolen every idea that they ever had. Yeah, and basically. It to I, was like, and I had this really great thing when I was a young person, so I want to create this really great thing for young people. But um, no, but in, in, in that time, so it was probably more structured. So we'd do um, like sessions on like sexual health and. Um, AOD, like drug and alcohol, um, and and things like that. And then we just did fun activities, like, and they'd make it quite, you know, engaging for such a diverse range of young people as well, especially for that time, you know, because we're going back to, you know, <laughs> I don't think any of us had a diagnosis of any neurodiversity that we all have now. <laughs> so it was just yeah, and this group of ragamuffin teens that were just queer and these people who were trying their best to do something that, you know, maybe hadn't really been done so much before. Well, we are talking the end of last century. Is that what we're Yeah, okay. Talking? Let's slow down, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm that old. But, yeah. Amazing. And was it like a shop front sort of set up? No, so it was only once a week and it was a, a youth centre there but um yeah that's sort of transformed it I guess Amanda would like get lava lamps and stuff and like go in before us and like set it up so it like had the ambiance <laughs> and yeah it was really cool amazing we need to go for a short break and when we come back we will have some more of the very wonderful Jack Curry right after this <laughs> We're just on Facebook. Hello, everybody on Facebook. Uh, Wombat and Goose have answered. Back at 12 a.m. tonight, so first thing tomorrow morning, uh, in the cult slot, wink for our encore. Okay, great. I'm winking. Oh, and it's me, Wombat. Hello, darling. Johnny Wombat. He's a kind man. Johnny Wombat. Johnny Wombat's Love very the kind. Name. Goose is lovely. But Johnny Wombat's where it's at. But don't tell Goose I said that. Um, yeah, Galar sounds quite amazing. Yeah, it was for its time, you know, really cool. And I love the concept that Amanda would go in and just go, oh, we'll just plug everything in and get it all happening and, and being able to walk into a space that you feel as though that you claimed. Oh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> because it was very drab, I guess. And yeah, so she was like, okay, the queer kids, the queer kids are coming, let's fix this up. Yeah, right, yeah, let's it do cool. it right. Yeah. Um, just what I'm thinking too, um, if you have a question for Jack, please pop it in the thread and I will ask on your behalf. That would be fantastic. There's. Um, We've got a few people watching. There's 473. No, it's 11. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw it in your face. And you're like, what? No. <laughs> there is 11. No. And maybe that's still doing it anyway. But still no, that's it. okay. I can deal with 11. Fantastic. Maybe not 473, no, though. I did love your face, though. You're like, what? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Um, well, that's great that you had somewhere that sort of saw you. Yeah. And saw all those other young people at the time too. Yeah, definitely. It's crucial, like really crucial times. Yeah, and if you'd seen the diverse cast of crew that like went along, you know, there were, you know, some older people who would rock up after work still in their business attire. Then there would be folk in like, you know, the raver pants of the late so 90s. it was an all ages thing? Uh, not all ages, it was up to 25. Yeah, right. But when you've got like 16 year olds that are, you know, and then you know, a 25-year-old who's finished work. But, you know, we all got along really well. And, yeah, yeah it was great. 
Yeah, right. So that intergenerational thing to yeah. a degree. Yeah, definitely. No, it was really cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that you found them and that you found a place of belonging because... Welcome back. You're watching Let's TV. I am Lance De Boyle. As I look into the camera, I now see that Nate is out here doing the floor management and Jude has gone in to do the, uh, the button pushing, which is fantastic. If you've just joined us, we have two very marvellous young people here who have been doing uh, some work experience with us here at Lands TV. They're driving the show and it's all very fantastic. So our thanks to those two people. Um, Jack, we've just come out of the, you know, the early days for you. Mm. Um, you got to a point after Gala, you went, you know what, I'm going to go and be a teacher. I'm going to go and give back. Talk yeah. to us about that. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it was a bit of a weird journey to get to teaching. Um, I was sort of telling Lance before the show that um, I was actually out at um, ARC, a, a queer night club. Oops, 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 That's oops, it, oops. having the time of my little life. And as you sometimes do when you're <laughs> out on a night in the town, you get to that point where you're starting to have epiphanies. And um, yeah, I was thinking about um, you know my life <laughs> and um, the, the, the change points in my life, I guess. And I was thinking about a teacher that I'd had in prep and grade two, Mrs. Marshall, and how how I felt when I had her as a teacher and what it meant to me as, you know, as a young person to have this teacher. And I was like, that's it. I'm becoming a teacher. You know, I hadn't finished year 12. I was like, I don't know why I thought I could do it, but you know, um, <laughs> like the TikTok thing, you know, that uh, it's something like the, the queer belief that you can do anything. So true. Um, but yeah, so then I um, had to go and do some like testing and stuff and I got into uni by some fluke and um, yeah, became a teacher, a primary school teacher, which I absolutely loved. Really? How long, how long were you a teacher for? Um, I was a teacher um, for about 10 years altogether. So I taught, um, uh, I did my studies in Sydney and I taught um, around there and then I came down here for a little while um, because my wife is from here and I'd moved down um, and then I went and taught up in the Northern Territory for a while. Wow, I've yeah. lived in the Territory, whereabouts in the Territory did you teach? Oh yeah, I was in uh, Catherine and Catherine. 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 and in Arnhem Land in Gumbalanya as How well. How beautiful. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, absolutely loved it up there actually. And that was, that was a life, being up in the NT, that yeah. was a bit of a life-changing experience for you as well. You had more epiphanies at that point. Can you tell us about where you were and, yeah. and what was happening and what happened. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, I love teaching, I really do. But what I really noticed quickly and, and from my own personal experience in my younger years as well, is that if you've got a lot of stuff going on and if your mental health, if you've got mental health challenges or you're experiencing, um, you know, some trauma or family violence or, um, you know, you've got some stuff going on at home or your parents have stuff going on, that it can actually be impossible to connect with education. You can have the best teacher in the world who can differentiate the work and make it as interesting as they can. And best believe I was bringing out all the stops with the puppets and so on. But, um, you know, you've got to put people's mental health and their sort of well-being first to get those sort of positive results. So then, yeah, I took myself back to school and did a grad dip in psychology and then moved into um, providing like well-being and counselling support in schools to young people. So, so you went and got education? Yeah. Got, a, got a grad dip in psych and then returned to schools. Yeah, then I was back in schools, yeah. And that's how I was doing um, mental health work in there. But, you know, <laughs> I did that for about six years. And what I found in that space, not to say there's something wrong with everything, but um, <laughs> that schools aren't set up to prioritise mental well-being, mental health and well-being. So teachers are told, like, you've got to teach and we've got to put this focus on this. And sometimes I was finding that, especially for principals and some of those senior stuff, it could be really hard to say, actually, we need to do more. So I was getting a lot of, like, you need to be working one-on-one -on -one with young people. And I was like, they're five. Like, we need to be doing whole of family work and bringing families in. And I worked in a couple of schools that were receptive to that, but then a couple of schools that really weren't. 
And so that was a bit of a time where I was like, okay, maybe this isn't just the right fit for me. It's still something that I'm very passionate about. So where can I sort of go and find where I can do more of that whole of family work? Amazing. And from that, uh, you discovered Drummond Street Services. Drummond Street Services. Yes. Yeah. I, I've been at Drummond Street now for two and a half years. And, and did you start there as a family? A youth and family prac. Youth, yeah, right. Yeah. So I just started there doing youth and family prac work in Geelong, which, um, you know, I did love um, as well. But just Drummond Street had the missing pieces for me. You know, they, they work under a whole of family framework and they, they put that, um, I guess, that lens over the work that they do and that priority and it's, you know, a real... Um, clear priority of mental health and well-being and overall wellness for people, taking people as they are. You know, a whole stream of Drummond Street is queer space. So that queer lens is brought into the work and we're, you know, using research and, um, you know, evidence-based approaches um, to the work. Um, that's just really exciting, you know, I think. You know, not that I should, like, I'm not here, <laughs> you know, plug... Drummond well, Street no, per se, but, my but question, for my question me will be is, to you now too. Is yeah. like we we know the Q Hub falls under, or well, partially falls under um, Drummond Street Services. Mm. But what are some of the services that Drummond Street present? Yeah, so they do a range of services, queer and non-queer services. So um, in queer space, there's, um, you know, counselling services, um, of course, around the state too. So they've got a number of regional Q space pracs out in um, areas like Wodonga and Mildura, um, oh, so Kyneton. Out, like, outreach or...? or uh, no, they've got pracs in hubs. those areas, like one prac in um, each of those areas working in partnership with places like Anglicare. Yeah, um, okay. And then... Um, We've got a big family violence component because we know that, you know, disproportionately, again, family violence does affect, you know, queer families and often going into mainstream services, um, especially for trans and gender diverse folk, it can be quite, um, you know, an an overwhelming experience or maybe they're met with a brick wall and, you know, it's a women's only service or a men's only service and for folk that are sitting, you know, non-binary folk or gender fluid, that maybe it's not the right place for them. So having specialised services around family violence is really important um, part, I think, of the work that Drummond Street are doing. Um, and then, yeah, like housing services, they're in partnership even here in Ballarat for, with the Pride in Place. Um, uniting? Yeah, Uniting, who do a really great job of providing housing security um, for queer folk who are experiencing um, homelessness or um, don't have that housing security. Yeah, because Uniting for Ballarat is the opening doors, isn't it? That's the, like in Ballarat, like if you're homeless, you have to go through, yeah, go through Uniting, Uniting and then they kind of out from there. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple of um, uh, housing services, but yeah, Uniting is... Um, especially for queer folk, going through Pride in Place is a really good place to start. And what, just off the top of your head, what, for those who don't know, what is Pride in Place? Um, yeah, so Pride in Place, so if you're experiencing um, homelessness or at risk of homelessness, then um, Pride in Place is that sort of entry point so they can do some case management. They've got uh, contacts with a bunch of emergency housing. If you need some help, like moving into safe housing, they can help with those sort of things. Um, help you keep your eye on the rental market if you're wanting to go into private housing, things like that. Amazing. Yeah, Amazing. it's a great organisation. And just looking back to Drummond Street Services, your work as a child and fa youth and family... Child service, and family... Child place. and family practitioner. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what did that entail? Yeah, so that was... Um, that was working through uh, another partnership role, actually, at Head to Health, um, and that was working with um, any um, sort of families that came through, whole families who might be experiencing some, um, yeah, mental health challenges, AOD challenges, um, wellbeing things um, throughout the family. So it might be that the parents are presenting and want some support in parenting their young person, um, or it might be that the young person is maybe having some challenges themselves and the parents are looking at ways that they might be able to help support help support them. So yeah, we'd sort of work through, um, you know, strategies that work for the families. You know, I take a pretty individual 
an individualised approach. I like to sort of build relationship and rapport. Well, no two people are the same. That's right, that's exactly. That's psychology, right? <laughs> that's right, that's right. And, you know, it's, um, yeah, it was, yeah, really rewarding work. So we'd get people all across the lifespan. So people with, you know, who might be, you know, pregnant, babies, toddlers, children, teens, and, um, you know, even adult children. Um, and would have, you know, parents coming in for supports. So, yeah. Amazing. Jack, thanks for all of that. We do need to go for another break. And when we come back, we will have some more of the very wonderful Jack Curry right after this. <laughs> Dr. Sophie made all those stingers. We love them. Yeah, they're they're all... All those stingers have um, a, a Ballarat connection. So apparently there used to be some fast food joint yeah. that had all these little cars with a little piggy on it. That's yeah. so fun. Yeah. I'm going to make a petition to bring it back. I think you should. I want the pig cars back. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, you know what? I had, I had this open and I could see that there were more. Hello, everyone on Facebook. There we go. Um, so, oh, here we go. So Tanya Smith, great job, Nate and Jude. I wish I was there. Hello, Tanya. Uh, and Nate's just like, yeah, I wish we were here too. <laughs> um, uh, Sally McGuire, McIntyre, go Nate and Jude, great job. Um, Harper, Harper replied to Wombat and Goose out of the can. Oh, it's me, Wombat. Uh, Harper Francis Finitash Timmons, it's me, Harper's little Little Desert Oasis. Uh, Sally McIntyre. Hello, Chloe Rowe. Hello, Chloe, if you're watching. And Pam Smith, we are watching. Ah, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's, I who, love this. Who's Pam Smith? Nan. Oh, it's Nan. Oh. Hello, Nana Smith. <laughs> that's amazing. Keep watching, keep watching. The good bit's going to come up, Pam. Just give it a little bit longer. The not that Jack's not role. the good bit. No. <laughs> no, I'm not the good bit. <laughs> We're ready for the good bit. That's right. Um, well, we've got still like 45 seconds to talk about something. Do you want to talk about Breezy up there? Yes, I was just saying I watched the um, episode where Breezy made their um, debut and I like that they're um, still hanging around. Fantastic. Amazing. Yeah, that's Breezy up there, everybody. The, Looking out, looking over the sea in Lance TV. I can feel those red eyes piercing into my yeah. psyche. Leti yeah. So if you if you would like to buy some art from Letitia Yates in the form of some, like a little creature like the wonderful non-binary breezy, um, I'm sure Letitia would like you to buy some some art. Might have to get some for Q Hub's wall. Lift off. We have a lift off. Hello, welcome back. You're watching Let's TV. I am Lance de Boyle. And we're here in the third part of a three-part interview with Jack Curry. How are you going so far? Getting through it, getting through it. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. I need to you're, bring up my Lance you're, you're, energy. You're, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, your eyes are starting to sparkle again. I think you, you're sitting there going, oh, God, the end is nice. Yeah, this is correct. great. In a really great way. We have... <laughs> Spoken about Q Hub through through pretty much your, your whole time here. What is? Let's get into the bones of it. What is Q Hub? Yeah, so Q Hub, um, Q Hub, as I as I sort of spoke about a bit earlier, is um, mental health, wellbeing, and social connectedness um, opportunities for LGBTIQA plus kids or young people up to 25, um, and their families or their special people that might want to come in for support. Yeah, so. It's, um, uh, we've got a, a hub in Geelong, a hub in Ballarat, and we do outreach to the surf coast. And it all sort of came about um, during, I think like early COVID, um, there was a bunch of community members in both Ballarat and Geelong um, who came together and were like, there's something missing for our young people and that's having a safe space where they can go and hang out and access supports um, in a way that's safe and affirming. Um, and they worked with um, uh, MP at the time, Andy Medic, um, who took it into state government. And state government were like, cool, let's 
let's support this and, you know, put some funding out. Was just to interrupt too, Andy mm. Medic actually has a trans child as well. So this was a project that was very close to his own heart yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely. It? Yeah. And, you know, an absolute staunch advocate still comes out. You know, we had our um, Geelong launch and we were really um, happy that Andy Medic was able to come down and be a part of it and see it all come to fruition. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, what can I tell you? Well, when did when did Q Hub start? Let's go. Let's look a bit of the history. So yeah. we, we've got the very early kind of here's an idea because Andy, yeah. did Andy write a white paper or something as well to do with that? Didn't he? he wrote something. I know he put together a document of some sort. Yeah, I'm not sure actually. I know the community definitely put something together. They got a whole bunch of evidence and um, spoke to a lot of people around community to put something together to sort of present forward. Um, yeah, and so then got passed. Tender went out. Tender went out, and, and Drummond Street were like, "This is right up our wheelhouse." So, obviously, with like a long history working in the queer health specter um, through queer space, um, and also uh, all, already working in Geelong, so Drummond Street um, went into partnership with Wellways, who are really industry leaders in peer work, which um, is. I'll talk a little bit about maybe when I'm talking about the peer component. Um, and then CAFs, who, as you know, have over 100 years' experience working in Ballarat with young people and families. CAFs, so Children and Family Services. That's it, <laughs> in Ballarat. So, um, yeah, they were the sort of pieces of the puzzle to make sure that we had, um, I guess, the best of everywhere that we could put into this program um, and, and those long histories of working in those specific areas or or spheres that um, that could be brought into the work. So um, yeah, and um, then yeah, we've got like the staff are uh, everything in this project. Like that, we just have the most amazing staff. So we've got um, at each site we have a youth and family practitioner. So Alex in Ballarat and Jay in um, Geelong. And then we've got, and they're providing the whole, um, like the family uh, counselling and also the individual counselling. And then the peer workers, we've got Zareen and Marcus, and they really work using their lived experience to build like meaningful connections with young people. They do sort of one-on-one -on -one work where they help young people sort of co-navigate through what they're experiencing. And um, yeah, just, I'm a really big advocate for peer work. I just think it's a really beautiful um, way to move through some things you're experiencing. And then we've got Liz and Britt, who are our community engagement extraordinaires, um, because this whole thing like QHub is really built off um, community and getting that, uh, the voice of community. So they're out talking and we've got community advisory boards, they're checking in with young people, going into schools, they're going and speaking to community, you know, queer community members and other organisations and just always listening and learning and taking in, you know, what feels right and meaningful, I guess, at each site. Amazing. And is this a, a long-term project or a short-term project or...? Well, um, we're currently funded until September 2025, but absolutely crossing everything that we get refunded. So we've been, you know, doing really well so far. You know, we've got um, our counselling sessions happening and we've got our fun drop-ins and excursions. We've got um, in Ballarat, um, Red Tree Arts, run an art group on a Monday that consistently has, you know, it's always full. <laughs> um, you know, I think connecting with extracurricular activities can sometimes be, you know, overwhelming or challenging for queer folk. So we're really lucky to be able to provide things like that. Based on community need, we've got Dungeons and Dragons starting in Geelong. Oh, that'll be popular. Yeah, that's all I hear about is Dungeons and Dragons. D &D, D &D. That's all people D &D. want. And I know nothing about it um, other than, you know, you get to play, yeah, like role play and create 
ultimately whoever you want to be um, in this game. So yeah, it's really, you know, really great. We've got some great stuff happening and hopefully, you know, the state government will, you know, look at what we've done and look at the way we're connecting in with young people and being guided by young people's voices primarily and go, yeah, this is a cool thing that we're going to keep going for hopefully the long-term future. Amazing. And, and how far in, into the project are you? Um, we're one year, actually. Yeah, so one year this month. So it's a, a two-year project at this point? Yeah, like, yeah, two and a half. Two and a half year. Yeah. And you're going all right so far? Yeah, going great. Fantastic. Loving it. Look at you, you've just lit up all over Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, <laughs> I'll say, you know, I'm the biggest kid there. That's probably why I'm managing it, because I... You know, I love it. And, you know, I go out and do, you know, do the activities. We went yesterday to a fantastic place in Ballarat who let us have free reign of their arcade room and they do um, a smash room. And I smash, you know, smashing plates and getting all that pent up energy out. It was fantastic. Just loved it. And do they do the, do the axe throwing and stuff there? Yeah, as they well? do do the axe throwing. Yeah, because yeah. there was conversation earlier tonight too. There's a certain can we say it? It's a brand anyway. Time zone has mm. has arrived in Ballarat, so yes, I that do might be hear on the cards as well. Uh, yeah, definitely. That's um, well, yeah, it's a very high sensory input place. Time zone. So. All colour, <laughs> colour and movement, colour and movement. That's right. Yeah, but yeah, no. There's, yeah, we, we always want to find new places around Ballarat and Geelong that, um, you know, young people want to connect in with and, yeah, time zones on the cards. Amazing. Jack, you are such a kind human being. I can, like, just sitting with you, I feel so much more calm. Um, your journey has been super interesting and I really thank you for sharing that with us tonight. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Keep out yawning. <laughs> yeah, well, just a coughing fit, but that's yeah, fine. Yeah, well, you know, but we, we kind of agreed on that. That's true. Jack, for being on the show, we've got some goodies for you. <laughs> like to start with this lovely little tiny pride little shopping bag of some sort. We love that's tiny pride. Uh, yes. Um, we, uh, we have been celebrating Ballarat Pride here, courtesy of the City of Ballarat. There's been 50 events. Wow. So I'll give you that. Maybe Geelong might copy us next year. That's amazing. And of course, because you've been on the show, you get this <laughs> frame photo of me and it says, I was on Let's TV. Can I tell you, I know someone with this hanging in their office and I've been so jealous for so long. Who's that? Um, Brie Gorman. Oh, we love Dr. The Brie. Brie Dr. Gorman. Dr. Brie. <laughs> And um, yeah, I, I, I stare at it lovingly every time I'm over there and I'm very excited to put this up in my study. It can go next to my signed picture of Gough Whitlam. Oh, I don't know I who love I'll love Edward, more. Edward Gough Whitlam, I would love that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just my two favourite boys. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, again, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. We have one more ad break to go through and then we arrive at the end of the show. So thank you for that. And when we come back, we'll have the last part of Lance TV right after this. We hope you enjoyed our interview with Jack Curry. If you'd like to find out more about the work that Drummond Street Services does, head over to the website at www.ds.org.au. Lance TV will be back right after this. And here we are. Um, I'm just looking in the thread. Keith Smith. <laughs> Keith Smith is in the thread. Fantastic program and production, smiley face. Tanya Smith. Fantastic work, Jack. Very inspiring and interesting story. Our kids need more support groups in regional areas. Agreed. Onwards and upwards, we need to get them out to more regional areas. And you were saying before that uh, Drummer Street Services have have some um, like hubs around. Talk yeah, to us a bit they more do. About that. Yeah, so they're not um, hubs in the same way that this are, but they do have um, full time pracs. So it's called Q Space, um, and you can get more info off the Drum Street Services website. Um, and, and where are they located? Um, there's, um, now I've got to remember them all. <laughs> I have to look them up. Um, <laughs> Wodonga, Sorry, Victoria. Wodonga, Kyneton, um, Mildura, 
and um, Geelong. Amazing. It's and nice to have a couple of spots along the Murray. Yes, um, that's there's right. A, there's a lot of work that does need to happen up there. Yep. Yeah, we're getting that feedback from um, the Prax. You know, they they have quite high numbers, as you can imagine. There's not a lot of services out in those areas. Um, and they do lifespan work too, so they can work with young people, um, actually all ages. So yeah, it's great. Amazing. We had a, a person called Meg Sheehan, Sheehan who lives, oh, I want to say Albury Wodonga, mm -hmm. and she does a lot of work with young people in that area. Yeah. But the paddock's so big, like she was saying she does thousands of kilometres yeah. um, because youth, queer youth are, are so far apart from each other and it's, it's quite kind of, there needs to be work met, but, you know, funding people yeah. and needs are often two, two or three different things. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, very challenging with some of those really re like remote and um, rural areas. Amazing. Well, we're almost back. <laughs> Where, how long have we got, kids? Five. Four, three, two. <laughs> Welcome back to Lands TV. It's time for All Over the Shop. On the 29th of June is the Obsidian Dark Beer Festival at the Ballarat Mining Exchange. That looks like fun if you're into dark beers. Also tomorrow is the free entry market at Geelong from 9 till 3 p.m. That's at Ferner Avenue in North Geelong. And that looks like a ripper of a time. On the 1st of July is LGBTIQ time. Have your questions answered at Bendigo Library from 10 to 12 with the very lovely Zara Jones. On the 4th of July, the LGBTIQA plus 101 workshop is happening at Yakandanda Community Centre. Uh, that's brought to you by the FRR and Line Wangaratta. The 6th of July is an exhibition by Seiko Hoashi. Prologue, Exploration in Abstraction and Japanese Calligraphy. And that starts at one o'clock on the 6th. On the 9th of July, Once Upon a Rhyme, part of the Melbourne Magic Festival. And that's at Arrow on Swanson Street. And that starts at quarter past 10, quarter to 11. The 13th of July, it's a Saturday. It's NAIDOC Week celebration with the National Gallery of Victoria. And you can find that in the Ian Potter Centre. 20th of July, International Moon Day at the Ballarat Observatory is an afternoon session happening out there at Cobden Street in uh, Mount Pleasant. The 25th of July from 6 o'clock is a Mirka Mora, The Whereabouts of Love exhibition. If you love the works of Mirka Mora, bless her soul, that's where you be. On the 26th of July is the 2024 Ballarat Jobs and Training Expo that'll be at the Good Shed and at the Civic Hall in Ballarat. A spooky spring market is happening on the 20th of September at Barclay Square here in Ballarat and that's an initiative of the BGT in combination with BRMC and crew. Of course, Festival of Australian Queer Theatre is coming up very soon, the 22nd to the 25th of August. Tickets are going on sale next week. How exciting. And for those of you who like to book in advance, uh, Haley's Comet Viewing Party on Thursday the 28th of July 2061 and that's happening from 6pm and uh, put that in your diary. And back to the studio. Welcome back. You're watching Let's TV. This is me, Lance DeBoyle, and I'm here with these two very wonderful people. Uh, do you want to introduce yourselves? Uh, uh, I'm Nate. I mean, no, no. <laughs> no, I didn't do that on purpose. I'm Jude. Uh, Nate. Um. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, is, there any, do you, is there anybody who's watching that you'd like to send a cheerio to? Hello, friends. And uh, yeah, yeah, friends. Kind of my whole family for some reason. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, hello to the Smith family. <laughs> there you go. Um, you've been with us now for four days. Yes. Yeah. You were both saying, I think I asked you at one point today, it was like, have you done work experience before? And what was your answer? Uh, no. This is our yeah, first hard. time. Yeah, we're both year 10s, so pretty exciting. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And what were, you th what were you thinking was going to happen when, when you first reached out and went, do you do work experience? Uh, what, what were you imagining? Uh, 
Had no idea. Yeah, um, no, yeah it was no kind clue. of just a shot in the dark. It just, yeah, looking for something in media, something exciting, hoping to learn more about you know, cameras and live TV and stuff. So yeah, definitely got that. Worked out well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so the story at our end was I was approached, I got an email from Jude's mum going, hi, do you do work experience? And I was like, hmm, we haven't done it before, but that's not to say we won't do it. Sure, we'll do it. <laughs> and then not long after that, I got an email from Nate going, hi, do you do work experience? And I went, well, if we're going to have one person, we might as well have two people, sure. And it worked out that not only did you know each other beforehand, <laughs> but you're actually partners as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, um, it, you won't believe us, but it did happen by coincidence. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I forgot to tell Nate that I was like, oh, we're, gonna, we're talking about doing work experience here. And Nate sent an email. Yeah, so um, mum found you guys on uh, Facebook and I'd watched a couple of episodes and I was like, sure, and I sent an email. And then <laughs> yeah. we called that night and I told Jude and Jude's like, oh, mum's already, my mum's already sent an email. So it <laughs> worked out really well. It didn't so, happen yeah. on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love the serendipity of the whole thing. Yeah. Um, like it was just really meant to be. And then when you both came in with your parents and I met these two pairs of wonderful parents who really not only love their children but really support and and hold space for their children and I don't see I actually don't see that very often and it was on your behalf it was quite beautiful to see the connection that you have with your parents it's a, it's a beautiful thing and you're both such wonderful young human beings <laughs> thank you um, and talking over dinner tonight. We had a pizza party tonight um, and talking over pizza and just how you both understand the world and have that real sense of social justice. Um, is that something you got from your family? Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We, I don't know if you want to go yeah, no, we At the dinner table have political conversations. <laughs> um, yeah, my parents have always been just incredible, very, very supportive. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, and mum at home. <laughs> yeah, no, they're just incredible and really, really lucky to have them. I know there's certainly not enough of that in the queer space, so they've just been, oh, yeah, just absolutely incredible in helping with every aspect of, like, you know, the transitioning, you know, just everything. They're just amazing. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Um, so tell us about your experience here over four days and running the show tonight. How's that been? Oh, we've had, we've had an amazing time. It's just been lots of fun and like it's stuff that we both are interested in. So there were like media and TV and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's been a really good experience sort of learning um, the stuff like that and, and fun. Like not, not just like a good learning experience, but it's been lots of, lots of fun hanging out here. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, editing the artist corner and like talking to Sophie and everything and like you've been amazing and I think learning all the cameras and stuff it's been heaps massive learning experience and I think it was yeah definitely got everything out of it so it was been really as much really as great. Could have gotten out of work experience. Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely so. Been amazing. Amongst all that, are you saying Cheryl wasn't amazing too? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you've been on Lance TV, I want to give you. A great photo of me that says, I was on Let's TV. So you get one. This is gone straight to the pool straight room. Straight to the pool straight room. Straight to the pool room. Love it. And you get a photo of me from saying I was on Lance oh, TV. Thank you. <laughs> and also uh, from the school from Safe Work, the uh, award of attainment oh my God. to the pair of you. <laughs> I won't kind of really face it too much. <laughs> yeah, it's on it. So oh, that's, that's yours, I believe. Thank you. And that's yours. Thank you thank so you. much for everything you bought. To Lance TV over the last four days. It's been a real pleasure on our behalf as well. Thank, thank, you, for thank you for having us. us. Yeah, no, Thanks for being here. It's, been, <laughs> it's been, yeah, no, an nice incredible friend. experience and, yeah, couldn't have done it. So, yeah. Fantastic. So you're in year 10. You've still got two more years of high school left. Yep. Um, what's the, what do you think your future plans are? Are you thinking that far in the future or are you just getting through today? Just Sorry. find out. For me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm quite interested in psychology at the moment, doing year 11 psychology, so that's been a massive kind of step for me. But yeah. Fantastic. Who's your favourite psych psychologist? Oh, God, Do don't I? Yeah. Um, <laughs> my own. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, no. Very humble. <laughs> no. I'm, a, I'm, a fan, I'm actually a fan of Carl Jung. I don't know very many names. Yeah. He was a student. Only year 11. He was a student. Uh, right, yeah. 
But um, yeah, yeah, you'll love you. Yeah, really excited. And uh, your background or, or what you do in, in other worlds, you're into music, do you? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm in a band. I've got a band with mates. Um, we're doing stuff at the moment and we're, yeah, having a good time with that and making yeah. other art and that kind of stuff. Fantastic. So the plan is to make music and conquer the world? Yeah, 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 become famous rich rock stars. That's right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 amazing. Uh, we've only got a few seconds left. I'm going to check the thread just in case Nana's got something else to say. Um, Rebecca H. Russell, great show, great interview and excellent work, Nate and Jude. Uh, Wombat and Goose, congrats on, on, the, um, on the CBF support. Uh, Melissa Dior, brilliant work, Jack. You make the world better every day. That's for you, Jack. Um, uh, Rebecca H. Russell, yay, from Ken and Rebecca. Chris, uh, Kristen Sheridan, congrats, congratulations, Jude and Nate. And Wombat and Goose, well, well done, Jude and Nate. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You've, you've really brought a lot to us. And, and as I said um, at dinner, it's, you know, not only have you learnt from us, but we've definitely learnt from you too as well. Thank you. So, you know, we're all teachers, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And we will be back again next week with more Lance TV. But in the meantime, remember, be kind. Thanks for watching Lance TV. We'll be back same time next week. Lance TV is made possible through funding from the Community Broadcasting Foundation. I'm voiceover guy Randall Smith. See you next time.